Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody has had a good Thursday. I want to start off by apologizing <clears throat> for pushing off the discussion from last night to tonight. There's a couple of reasons, and I'm just going to quickly talk about those, <laughs> and then we're going to move on into the open discussion for tonight. Uh, hey, guys. Hey, BBZ. Hey, Candice. Hey, Amber. Hey, Alana. Hey, Sweet Home. So, hey, Rain. Hey, Nikki. Hey, feeling kind of breezy. So, the reason I, there's two reasons why I pushed off the live stream from last night. First, EB, JJ, Comic Nut, Josh from the Dad Challenge podcast, Illuminacy, um, and Hey, Charlotte. Uh, hey, Tella. Usually my streams don't start off this intense. Um, who was the other guy? The Glarer and maybe somebody else were doing a live stream last night at the time I typically do my open discussions uh, discussing child exploitation and family vloggers. And if you guys have looked back at some of my other content, like my earlier commentary content, I have been pretty passionate about discussing things like that. So I really wanted to be present for, for those that live stream. So not only did I want to be present for that, I have been sick for the last week and it's not a sympathy thing. I've been tested for COVID. I got tested last week the state lost my test. So I had to get retested today. Um, in order to go back to work, I have to produce a negative test. So since the state lost one, I'm I had to redo it today. I'm finally feeling a little bit better. I'm still not 100%. That's why my content has been lacking. That's why I haven't been able to live stream with you guys. I literally have hardly been able to get up. I've been so tired. Um, I don't know if I had COVID. A lot of my symptoms were COVID-like. Uh, I am feeling better now, so I didn't want to postpone this yet again. So despite the fact that I may be tired, we're going to go through this. I have um, been filming to try and make up for my lack of content, especially commentary content. That'll be out hopefully in the next couple of days for you. Um, but let's get into the topic today. Hey, Tammy. Hey, Liz. Did I say her name wrong? Illuminacy. Is that how you pronounce it? Hey, Jamal. Hey, movies, TV show. Hey, Lisa. Yeah, I appreciate that. I know it's important to take care of myself. I've kind of had that conversation with you guys before, although I appreciate you guys and you guys mean so, so much to me. This channel is not anything if I'm not in a good state to be able to be here. So I always want to be at least somewhat decent functioning to come on here, especially for our open discussions where we're talking about more sensitive conversations, having real world conversations. I don't want to really feel too poorly because then I may not address things appropriately. So hey, Detox, hey, Spirit Soul, hey, Christy, hey, Angela. So today's open discussion is mental health. You like my makeup? I actually filmed this. I'm not sure when it'll go up. Maybe in a day or two. I'm going to try and edit the two and a half hour reaction video I just did for you guys tomorrow. So hopefully you guys get that either tomorrow night or Saturday. But, hey, Emmy, hey, Madison, you've been sick as well. It seems a lot of people have been sick. I've missed a ton of stuff on social media. I've been trying to pick up the pieces. I've <laughs> DM'd poor Charlotte a few times to, I've seen stuff and I'm like, what did I miss? <laughs> Fill me in. <laughs> I've been trying to watch people's live streams and like be present, but I, some of them I have just fallen asleep or I couldn't, I couldn't focus to be a part of it. So 
What does partial disclosure mean? It depends on what situation you're talking about. Can you provide a little bit more context? Hey, Blue. So I didn't have any like real mental health focus when I put that vote up. I know mental health is something serious. It's something that is highly stigmatized. And I've had, okay, so let me address Alana's question and then we will move on. A partial disclosure for um, SA is they may provide some information, but not fully disclose everything that had happened. They only provide a little window or a little tidbit of information about what happened or what potentially happened. It doesn't mean, it also depends on the situation. Um, partial disclosures can, it depends on the state and the context. It can be that there was inappropriate touching but not penetration. Um, that could also be considered a partial disclosure. It depends on the full scenario. So with that being answered, Let's get on to the topic tonight, which is mental health. If you have not participated in one of these open discussions before, we talk about whatever the topic is voted on, which tonight is mental health. And we just openly discuss it, try to break stigmas around it when we're talking about things that are stigmatized, allow people to provide their struggles if they want to. You don't have to by any means. There is no pressure. Never put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. If you're somebody who watches this in the replay and either reading or hearing about people's sensitive stories are going to affect you, I advise to not listen to these videos and maybe find something different on my content if you're wanting just to watch me. Um, but with that being said, Mental health is a serious one, and it's the hard one to really discuss um, because you really have to be willing to be vulnerable to talk about mental health, to really break the stigma. I see a lot of times what happens is the stigma is slowly being broken, but it's not being broken always in the best way, especially when we have influencers who try to use their mental health as an excuse. They try to say their poor behavior is because of whatever they are struggling with as far as their mental health goes. Now, I am not foolish, and I'm well aware of the fact that mental health can influence how you behave and how you approach certain things. That doesn't mean it can be an excuse for how you behave, though. I think that is kind of hurting the mental health community right now. And the fact that over the last year, maybe two, we have seen influencers try to rely too much on that being their scapegoat. And it is extremely damaging, in my opinion, to those who legitimately have mental health and who are struggling. Everybody's struggle with mental health is different. You can be diagnosed with the same thing as the person next to you, and it's going to manifest totally differently in each individual. They're going to have different triggers. There's going to be different coping mechanisms, different medications. If they believe in medication or are taking medication, it is all situational and circumstantial and individualized. And that stigma needs to be broken away that if you have this diagnosis, I'm not even going to say one, but if you have this diagnosis, then you have to behave in X, Y, and Z manner. You have to be treated X, Y, and Z in order to get better because that's not doing anything for the mental health community. In my opinion, everybody has their own way and damning somebody for handling their mental health in a different way only hurts the community further, and it doesn't provide education. In order to educate 
and, and make people informed and aware, we have to be willing to listen to everybody in all sides of the story. We have to be willing to listen to the struggles other people are facing and how they are coping with it. We can't be afraid to hear the hard parts. If you're opening yourself up to that, you have to be willing to listen. You have to be an active listener if you are putting yourself in that position. Oftentimes I put myself in that position and I tell you guys, feel free to reach out to me if it's something that is going to hurt you or if you're not sure how to handle something or you don't know the resources in your area, I will be more than happy to help and assist you in getting those resources to make sure that you're okay at the end of the day. It is never my intention during any of our open discussions or any time I talk about anything to ever come off insensitive. I think my flat effect at times and personality can be misconstrued. So please know that I mean that legitimately. If you ever feel you need to talk to somebody or you don't know where to go, you can reach out to me. I'm not a mental health counselor. I'm not a therapist. So I will be providing you resources unless it's just a basic conversation. If I feel it's coming into an area where you need legitimate help, I am going to make sure you're provided those resources for you to move forward in that. All right. So let me see what you guys are saying. Sorry, I've, I just wanted to break the ice and get into our topic for tonight. You just got pneumonia. I am so sorry. I hope you are able to make a fast recovery. Hey, Care, how are you? You're disabled with multiple mental health issues. For sure, we can always talk about those. Hey, Car Catherine with a C. Yeah, right now is influencers are selling mental health merch. I think that's been an ongoing thing. I'm not sure which one you're, you're referring to, Madison. I'm sorry, Kristen, she says she deals with um, the struggles and gets stigmatized by her own family. That happens a lot, especially if you're dealing with more serious mental health diagnoses. Sometimes even family members aren't able to understand or understand or be able to cope or learn how to cope. Okay, you, it was a year or two ago. Yeah, I know mental health has been something that's been used as merch before. I totally understand if you don't want to be here for the discussion. No harm, no foul. I hope to see you in the next one. Yeah, when people use mental health as a crutch, it, it's hard and it happens a lot. In your opinion, alcohol makes mental health worse. It definitely depends on uh, what the mental health condition is and if they're medicated and what their medication says, it can definitely exacerbate some mental health conditions for sure. Thank you, Rocky Keystone. I appreciate the kind words. The definition of anxiety on the back of a t-shirt. Yeah, that's, it's weird. Oops. Sorry, sometimes I get lost in the chat. You feel like if you can make someone smile, then it, it would make you, yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody's acts different. Mental health merch is disrespectful. 
like mental health is not a uh, viable, it's not fun. I definitely can see that argument, Emmy. And I think people who have like influencers, especially who maybe have tried to put out mental health merch has gotten that criticism from people. It is really insensitive for sure, especially if it's something that they're not struggling with or if it's something that, excuse me, they haven't been open with struggling with. It kind of teeters a weird line. Mental, oh, that's the same one, sorry. You love helping strangers and friends to help remind them about their self-worth. Yeah, self-worth is extremely important. Um, in, and it's something that a lot of people lack. Not, Of course, people who are struggling with mental health often struggle with their self-worth. But even people who have never had any mental health, which I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that we've all dealt with something to have some kind of effect. If it's long term and it's not diagnosed, I don't think that that doesn't mean we haven't all struggled. Um, it's just long term, you maybe haven't had the actual diagnosis. But I think as humans, especially as adults, we all struggle through certain phases which could fall under mental health to a degree. But self-worth is important for sure. Yeah, Sarah, she mentions a clip that's going around about WACB where she said not to um, mention mental health or else they get bumped. I've seen that clip and it's, she's an advocate though, guys but I don't want this to end up being about her. You dealt with depression at a young age. When you told your parents you wanted their therapy, they were put off. It took a year or two for them to take it seriously. Yeah. I think it's harder when we're talking about children and the fact that children can deal with mental health and deal with serious mental health. I think parents often worry my own, I think I've told this story to you guys before. I've mentioned this before. Uh, most of you all know I'm adopted. I was adopted when I was 10. About my early 20s, I not early, yeah, no, I was mid 20s. Um, I got my, as much of my record from being in state custody for 10 years as I was able to get. And in the documents, it said that I had ADHD and I talked to my mom, who that's who I refer to as my, my adoptive mom is my mom. And I had a conversation with her and I was like, did you know this? Like, I didn't know. And she was like, yeah, we knew. I just didn't want the stigma to be put on you. And I mean, I'm, I'm 30. So we're talking like 10 years, 20 years ago, it was still a stigma for children to have any kind of diagnosis like that. It's sending to a professional. Yeah, I agree. Like some things can, you can talk about mental health and things in a way to bring awareness and to be educational and to just be a venting ground for people. But the second that it crosses a line where you need a professional, I will tell you, you need to seek out professional help. I have in other open discussions multiple times advised individuals to seek out resources. And if they couldn't find the resources to DM me and I will help them find the resources in their area. You've had anxiety since you were a small child, your parents didn't recognize it. And it didn't help until you were an adult. Yeah, it. And as the stigma gets better, I think it's easier for people to talk about it, but it's still really not openly talked about like I would think it would be. Of course, the more similar or more common things that are discussed are like anxiety and depression. You hear people talk about those a lot, ADHD, ADD, OCD. These are ones that I hear 
not only influencers, but people in like common world to talk about often, but some of the more serious and more stigmatizing diagnosis that people have aren't talked about because there's still a stigma like uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, DID, which there is a good community here on YouTube that are experiencing uh, DID and who talk about it and their experiences. And I think it will only help the mental health community to continue to break down those walls. Eating low carb keto helps you with your depression. That's awesome. See, there's different coping mechanisms for everybody. Some people can't talk about it and that's okay. Absolutely. And you don't ever have to talk about things. If you want to keep things private and just listen to what other people are willing to discuss, that that can help somebody. Somebody who maybe is a silent watcher, hearing what other hearing or reading what other people experience or how they maybe cope with things can help. Bye, Lisa. I hope you have a good night. You'll never forget your doctor when you were resistant to medication and said what you, what a life changer. Yeah, I'm, and some people are okay with medication and some people aren't. And it's nobody's business or reason to judge anybody whether they choose to be medicated or not. I do understand that with certain mental health medication is almost necessary to cause a state of normalcy for them and that getting to that steady chemical balance for them is the hard part. And that's often when you hear people will start a new medication and there is a trial and a tribulation period because it is adjusting your chemical balances your in your hormones at times it is adjusting your insides and your body goes through that and then once they reach a state of normalcy they feel that they don't need the medication anymore and they'll stop taking the medication and they don't even realize that maybe they start plummeting back down because they thought they didn't realize that it was the medication helping them Hey, Rocklist, how are you doing? Stigma is crazy. Your parents didn't even tell you you had dyslexia. I found out on my own. That's an interesting one that your parents didn't disclose to you. I would feel like that that would be one that would almost help rather than hinder being known. Hey, it's just chat. How are you doing? Oops. Oops. Did I live in a foster home? I lived in state care for 10 years. So I lived in multiple foster homes. You deal with DID, bipolar one, PTSD, autism, and a few eating disorders, borderline personality, and so many anxiety and forms of depression. I'm so sorry that you have all of those diagnoses, but that doesn't mean that you can't function like everybody else. I mean, she's able to, and that's the thing that needs to be broken down. Like you can have more than one diagnosis and it doesn't mean that you're not normal or you can't participate in normal activities, which normal is subjective. Hey, Jersey. I think we self diagnose people to cope. My mom didn't have an official diagnosis, but I believe she had BPD. She'll get offended if I bring it up. I self diagnosing is a whole other issue in and of itself. Um, I am one to never try to try and diagnose or self diagnose anyone or myself. I don't have the credentials to do so it can be harmful. I took uh, multiple classes when I was getting my degree 
about mental health and mental health diagnoses and things like that. One of my favorite classes was abnormal psychology, where we talk about uh, a lot of mental health conditions, a lot of personality disorders and things like that. And when we first started talking about it, one of the first days of class, the professor said, you're going to look at everybody in your family and yourself hypercritically and try and diagnose with something because you realize nobody is the same. Everybody is probably struggling with something. There's no, no hate. They have BPD, but with all the therapies they've completed and with meds, I have control of it. And see, like that is almost upsetting to me to see that somebody says, please don't hate because it, it shouldn't be shameful. You shouldn't feel, I don't want to get upset, but like people with any kind of mental health and you're talking to somebody, I'm getting upset and I'm not even diagnosed with anything super serious. And it's sad that people feel to be a part of a conversation. They have to say, don't hate or like, don't judge me based off of something that they may not be able to help. Like, it's so sad. And if anybody ever provides any of my viewers any hate or is ever disrespectful to you, if I miss it, please let me know. I will address it immediately. I do not condone that kind of behavior anywhere. Yeah, the stigma is real and it's it's upsetting, obviously. It's super upsetting. Sorry to hear you have a headache, Rocklist. I hope you feel better. Social anxiety, depression, and Crohn's. Your 18-year-old has anxiety, too. And all the women in your family have or had depression. I don't know where your part two is, Catherine. I'll look for it. Jersey. See, and that's that can be damaging for people to project or assume somebody has some kind of diagnosis. If your per medical professionals, which I'm not saying you go to one and you're going to get the right diagnosis, often that's typically honestly not the case. You usually need to go to a couple or be going to the same one for a long period of time for them to actually get a grasp on what is going on. But if your mental professionals are telling you, you don't have something and other people are projecting it onto you, it, it can be damaging. Psychologist. So it's nice to have support. You think the autism schedule is much better? broader than we have been led to believe. Oh, I'm sure it is. I mean, the DSM is constantly changing it. Although it doesn't get new additions for a while, they're constantly adjusting that and changes are being made to that because it, it flows. And as we get better as a society and being able to pinpoint things and scientifically find things, our readings and our diagnoses and the spectrums and things like that are going to consistently be changing. I got into my kind of work because of my childhood. When you were diagnosed, you were told you had Asperger's, but don't actually know where you fall on the spectrum. Uh, I haven't read the DSM-5. I've debated buying it just for reference sake. Um, but Asperger's is no longer being used as a diagnosis. You're falling. Now it is being um, categorized as a 
a form of autism and I'm not sure where you would fall onto the spectrum either. You wish you could interact more with the chat. It's 4 a.m. Oh, man. That is super, super late. You should be asleep, Lou. Depression and insomnia for years. Yeah, borderline is very stigmatized. It, And I really don't think it should... I mean, <laughs> my personal perception is I don't think any mental health should be stigmatized at, at all. Oh, thank you, Rock List. Laughter is definitely the, me the best medicine at times. Yeah, I sure hope that kind of hate doesn't translate onto my channel, especially in these kind of conversations, like on my commentary videos and stuff like that. If you want to give me hate, that's fine. But I don't ever, and maybe that needs to be a part of my introductions, is not to be like that towards other. You have a bunch of diagnosis and pending rollouts as well. Yeah, it's Mental health is constantly changing. You've had anxiety your whole life and you felt out of place. Yeah. And you know, when we're children, I don't think we fully, as we are learning and becoming who we are, I don't think even as kids, we're, we're not really able to be fully self-aware to know that there's an issue or to really know, like you may get a sense of I'm dealing with things other people aren't, but because it's not talked about, it's not something that you think, oh, it may be something I can't control. It may be something, you know, biological or chemical. So you don't talk about it. You just think, I just worry too much or you're called a worry wart oftentimes. Like I, I think now it's starting to be for kids. It's starting to be picked up earlier if they're in a good environment, like a good, a good school system environment and things like that, that are able to acknowledge that have good teachers who are um, aware of their students. Wow. After I was diagnosed autistic, my friend told me I'm not autistic. I can't be because I'm sarcastic and autistic people can't comprehend sarcasm. I mean, that just go, that comment there shows the ignorance that is still in this world. That is beyond frustrating. Hey, Angel. You've been called so many rude names like monster, the R word and worse. That's the one thing I'm ashamed of. And that's not something you should be ashamed of. The people who are saying those terrible things are the ones who should be ashamed. Just because you're different, whether it's a physical appearance thing that's different or it's something that you can't handle, you shouldn't be labeled as anything that's, and I'm not trying to compare the two, but people who get in like serious accidents for whatever reason, and it ends up being disfiguring. I mean, there's people who will see a picture of them online and will just assume that they're ugly because they're, they don't fit their standard of pretty. And that's just, a, it's terrible. I mean, it's terrible. And there's obviously people who are born with defects or are born with certain diseases that make them not the stereotypical societal pretty. I mean, mental health is almost like the same thing. It's just invisible. And oftentimes that's how people try to educate around mental health is saying that it's invisible.
Yeah, when people say I'm so ODC, OCD, I'm like, excuse me, do you have intrusive thoughts and uncontrollable or urges that impair your life? No. Yeah, I, I understand that comments like that are made often by the general public. And I don't think that a lot of people who make comments like that are meaning to be offensive to someone who may be diagnosed with OCD. I, for a long, I remember in high school, OCD being something that even myself would say, oh, you know, you're so OCD if you're taking extra time and you're really organizing or rearranging things or making sure everything's perfect. So I've been ignorant to using that term before. And I never even thought about how it could excuse me, how it could be offensive to somebody who does have OCD, but those things can be offensive. I think it's in the context of which people are saying it um, as well. That makes the difference. Absolutely. I agree. She has nothing to be ashamed of. Nobody for any kind of diagnosis has anything to be ashamed of. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Emmy. I think that makes it harder for children who do struggle or even as an adult. As an adult, I don't think we're always when you have mental health, are you always looking for acceptance, like acceptance, but you just want to be reassured. As an adult, we have the ability to think critically we have the ability to, you know, not be so naive. And of course, I'm not saying everybody is not naive who is an adult. But when you are struggling with things where you are getting hate from other people, or being judged, the one place you expect to not receive any judgment is your family. And unfortunately, not always are families compassionate or willing to understand. Yeah, reading about any kind of diagnosis somebody has, doing any kind of research that is legitimate, I will be mindful to make sure you are Whatever you're reading, if you're trying to find factual information is from a credible source, just so you're not being misinformed or learning information incorrectly, because that can cause more damage. Yeah, I think we've all, especially as we're getting older, we all can make mistakes. We all can assume things and it seem like we're being ignorant. It's a, it's a lack of knowledge. If you realize that you are lacking or you're deficient in an area, you find yourself judging people who say they have the same thing or jumping to a conclusion of what that looks like or how they should behave. I think as people, we need to be self-aware and be able to acknowledge that that is something we are doing and try and educate ourselves. So we aren't ignorant to it. So we don't continue to make that mistake and continue to project our assumptions or our preconceived notions for whatever reason onto others.
your mother didn't, you and your mother didn't get along until you realized years later, she thought you were purposely trying to get on her nerves. Yeah, Rockless, I, I don't know if I know who Dustin Hoffman is exactly, but I I don't, and, and because I don't know him, I'm not trying to say that he's not the only one who contributed to the stereotype of people who are autistic being bad. There's a number of things that have gone on over the last, since autism became a diagnosis where people have misinterpreted or misrepresented what it is and what it's like to live with people who are autistic or have people who are autistic in your life. I don't, I genuinely don't understand how in today's society and in today's age, we are not more open about something like autism. Your biggest struggles, PTSD, panic attacks, and nightmares. Then you deal with SAD, especially right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I truly am compassionate to anything that you guys are struggling with as far as mental health goes. Oh, I just lost myself in the chat again. Sorry, guys. You have physical disformities and mental health. I find people accept my physical side as it's visual. I mean, you would be somebody who'd be able to comment to that more than uh, someone who's not like myself. I think because a physical disformity is like you're saying visual people can see it can it's tangible so people are able to maybe accept it and move on from it and like cope with it whereas mental health is not visible always and since it's not visible it's not really a tangible thing so it's hard for people to make like make sense of it Or OCD and a hoarder, not as bad as people on the TV show, but pretty bad. You don't know how many times you've heard you can't be OCD. OCD people need everything clean. I mean, and that's just ignorance is really what that boils down to people not knowing any different. So they are just taking what they assume because of what is portrayed, whether that be on TV or in movies or what they're told by somebody in passing who wasn't educated or wasn't in the right place to be trying to tell people about it. Well, Rocky Keystone, it seems that you have started that process because you're acknowledging it. And I don't think anybody should really be ashamed of things that are driven by mental health. Becoming aware and knowing is half the battle, in my opinion. I think once you're aware that you maybe have a diagnosis and it helps explain and helps you understand yourself even better, can only help you moving forward. You can do research, you can look up studies, you can do a number of things to assist yourself in coping with it better or learning of different mechanisms that maybe you didn't know before that may end up helping in the long run.
You wish you had therapy when you were younger, but we don't do that in my family. I'm in no way, <laughs> oh, <clears throat> no way a normal functioning adult. And I've been a hermit for 10 years. Well, what's normal for you is not going to be what's normal for me. And what's normal for me isn't going to be what's normal for you. Normal is subjective. Um, some people can't function like they literally cannot function, whether that's due to a mental disability or a physical disability or even a cognitive disability, something within your brain. Like you just normal is so subjective. And sometimes I wish the word normal didn't exist because it makes people want to hold themselves to standards that some people that aren't tangible for everybody. Yeah, I understand that, Emmy. I think in this world, it's everybody expects their expects the parents to be loving of their children to be nurturing of their children and i'm sorry you are on the receiving end of not feeling that from your family i truly am sorry that that's something that you have to cope with and work through it seems it's something you're still working through and there's nothing wrong with that there's a lot of us who weren't loved by our families or weren't loved appropriately by our families. I mean, it's an unfortunate reality, but that's why there are so many good agencies now that are looking out for children and their safety. Am I saying they're perfect? No, everything could change. Everything could always get better. Unfortunately, people who have children shouldn't always have children. I'm glad you do have somebody in your life, though, to give you some affection. Yeah, it is definitely never too late for therapy. I'm sorry to hear that. Your family doesn't believe mental health issues even exist. And some of your friends are skeptical as well. And that's unfortunate in 2020 when we have everything that we do have going on that people are still going to try and say things like this don't exist when there is legitimate science and statistics and research to back up the fact that these mental health things exist. And there are things that more people struggle with than what they are able to understand. I, I think they're just scared that they might be one of those people. Don't feel that way after the second time you stop trying. Yeah, that's, it sucks that so many of you guys have experienced not being believed or not having people and professionals not seeing it as a, a real issue because as you, you guys are disclosing, like it affects you to this day as an adult, it's still continually affecting your life. It doesn't mean that you're not functioning to some degree, but it, it still had an impact. I think it took two years for you to see a psychiatrist to find the right anxiety medication. You tried at least five before you found the right one. Yeah, unfortunately, it happened. That is normal to struggle to find 
this, the even a good therapist or counselor, whichever one you're seeing, um, it's hard to find one that you trust and that you're willing to disclose everything to. Because the reality is when you are seeking mental health help, you really have to be able to be totally vulnerable with who you're talking to and trust them 100% to make sure you are telling them absolutely everything. So you aren't being misdiagnosed. And I think sometimes misdiagnosis is ha diagnoses happen because clients or patients don't feel totally comfortable in revealing all of the information for whatever reason, whether it's because they're afraid of judgment or they don't trust who they're talking to, or they're afraid of the outcome, the full scenario and situation isn't disclosed. And if you are struggling with that currently, I would advise to start looking elsewhere, start getting other opinions, start I'm not saying shop around, but start talking to other people, other therapists, see if you find one that your personality clicks with better. I just seriously lost myself in the chat. Panic attacks is another thing that's been used and abused in the wrong way. You've had panic attacks and they are an event. They need to check your heart. It's no joke. Yeah, I think panic attacks has become something that people kind of use loosely. Uh, and I think there may be different levels of panic attacks. And because it's used so loosely, people assume uh, based on how it's portrayed and how people will vocalize, excuse me, vocalize their panic attack. Um, I don't think the full reality of what it's like is actually described. This isn't mental health, but I have kind of a rare blindness. People don't believe me. So my blindness is pretty much invisible. Ironically, I'm always open about it. Yeah, I mean, panic attacks can be uh, life threatening at times. People want to see something physical if you say you're not well. And people aren't always really ready to hear. I mean, that's the harsh reality is people aren't ready to hear and grasp what it's like for mental health um, and what different, like people even to this day don't understand schizophrenia. And um, in the work that I currently do with the courts, I find myself working with a lot of people who have schizophrenia and it's not understood by the wide wider public at all. It is a diagnosis that is still hyper stigmatized. BPD is also one of those. There's several, the mental health diagnosis diagnoses. I find that, are more severe, people are scared of because they don't want to learn what it's actually like. They don't want to, I don't know if it's because they're afraid to fully understand what somebody who is diagnosed with that, what it, their lives are like. I don't know if, if it's a fear factor. And that's why I don't know if it's just the inability to fully understand or be empathetic of somebody else's situation. I'm not sure where it is, like where the line draws as far as like, as a larger society. 
we are glad you're here to rock list. I use the word typical. It helps me. I will refer to my children without needs, my typical kids versus normal. I mean, yeah, if you have to label it as something, definitely, I think not using the term normal will help because it only using the term normal to me, and this is my personal interpretation, I think it can further stigmatize things if you're using normal, just like society kind of pushes, and this is kind of off topic, but the only real line I'm drawing right now is like how society pushes thin, curvaceous women as being the beautiful, like the Kim Kardashians. The average woman does not really look like Kim Kardashian, but that's what society wants you to think. Like tabloids and actors and actresses, the norm that has been pushed for so many years and across the world are thin, voluptuous women, not an average person. I'm not saying there aren't average typed body typed women who aren't having successful careers, but that's not what we put out into the world. That's interesting, Rock List. Hey, Alyssa, I'm glad you engaged in the chat. Absolutely, Candace. And I'm sorry you experienced something like that as a child. Yeah, normal is not a, uh, for anybody who I think is struggling with anything outside of what is deemed normal by society doesn't like the term normal. If you've ever been outside of that cookie cutter normal lifestyle or upbringing or whatever it is, I think we all tend to really not be a fan of that term. Yes, Madison brings up a very good point that it's hard because therapy is a privilege while mental health issues are so common, especially if you're in the U.S. Um, you know, we here in the U.S. versus uh, like Canada and some other places around the world, we don't we're not just given health care or health insurance. So it is harder if you have mental health to get the appropriate resources as I state in most of these videos, I will be sure to iterate it now. If you are struggling with any kind of mental health and you don't have insurance or you are struggling financially or just for any kind of resource, if you're in the States, you can dial pound, not pound, star 211, which is to United Way. You go through the prompts and they will provide you your local resources, whether that's for low cost or no cost mental health, help you locate your local food pantry. If food is an issue, there has been a lot of renters and uh, not insurance, excuse me, renters assistance with COVID that uh, local communities are able to assist people who are struggling during this time. There is a lot of things that United Way can offer. If you find yourself on the end of having to make that phone call, never feel ashamed for that. We all need help at different times in our life for different reasons. 
never be ashamed for that, especially if it's for something such as so serious as mental health. If you know you have mental health or you've been diagnosed with mental health and you are not in a financial position to pay for any services, please be sure you reach out to local, your local United Way. If you struggle with that or you have issues, if you want to and you're comfortable, you can always DM me on my social medias and I will try to assist you in finding what is in your area or close to your area. If you're not comfortable with telling me where you're at, I totally understand and will not pressure you. I will need to know your general county or surrounding county to be able to do the research to find sources for you. But don't go, don't leave it at bay if you are struggling actively. Hey, Jen. You wish people weren't so afraid to flow to show to show their flaws. Yeah, we're all flawed. I mean, I don't mean that to be hurtful or anything like that. But <laughs> literally, no one is perfect. Even if they appear physically to be perfect, they're not. I mean, there's no way anybody on this earth is 100% perfect. I don't believe that. I got lost in the chat, guys. I'm trying to go back and find my spot. Sorry. Being original is fun. Absolutely it is. And it makes life interesting. Okay, just found where I was. Sorry. For me, not being normal meant I was always shunned and alone. Yeah, and that's a lot of why I don't like the term normal. And I'm sorry that you had that experience. You learned eventually to embrace your uniqueness. That is awesome. Self-love is very important. My first attempt to seeking counseling, second session counselor opening line. I found it hard to believe all you told me last time about your mother. I'm curious to know where um, they studied at. And how they got passed to be a counselor, if that's going to be how they address their patients, especially if it was in a mental health field, that's to me seems super inappropriate. I was told by a counselor in the first meeting, so you're using your parents. It was absolutely crazy. And looking back, it's no wonder I went, I never went back. Yeah, it's definitely, like I said, not all counselors and therapists, psychologists, whatever you end up going to are all created equal. It's sad and it's unfortunate, but it is true. They're not all going to um, be the same. That's why I suggest if you do not click with whoever you're talking to or you don't feel comfortable for whatever reason, don't give them your money anymore. Go somewhere else. Try somebody else. Get recommendations from somebody somewhere so you know where to start. Google. Look at the reviews on Google or on BB, uh, Business Better Business Bureau. I mean, there's Yelp. There's so many 
um, what is it? Reviews, like re sites for reviews that you can go to to see what kind of recommendations they have. And you might be able to find somebody better that way. My heart rate was going wild. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it took you many times to try and find a therapist that you clicked with. Yeah, it's it's definitely an uphill battle in a multitude of ways if you have mental health. You don't look sick. Yeah. That's a terrible especially for a professional to say, and I'm not sure if that's the context that you're providing, but, and I know this isn't a popular opinion, especially since I'm saying we need to break the stigma, but we also, for people who have these, we need to be able to take this the time to not get defensive. I'm not saying you don't have a right to be offended because oftentimes I feel it is appropriate, but a, a comment like you don't look sick is just an ignorant comment, them not being educated in my opinion. And I think it would only benefit that individual if they're willing to listen to you for you to educate them, make that opportunity so they don't continue to offend not only yourself, but others down the line. I do understand not every situation is that going to be a possibility, but we have to put it on ourselves at times to be the one who is facilitating that education factor because even somebody who is highly educated and informed in mental health can misrepresent a, a diagnosis of any kind if they're not struggling it or they haven't done serious studies with that kind of diagnosis. That's why I have watched multi multiple pages and channels and researched DID. And it seems to be very common that they have to Google certain people who have the specialties to diagnose DID. And even then it is still hard to actually get the formal diagnosis to get the legitimate help that you need. In 2020, I don't think you guys should be anybody who is diagnosed or feel that they are struggling with something as serious as DID should have to go to those links to make sure that they can live somewhat a normal functioning life for them. And people aren't going to know that that's a struggle unless we have people who are willing to stop them in their tracks and educate them like Trisha Paytas, like stop. That whole thing she did for that community and then she did it with the transgendered community. I mean, I just not trying to bring other YouTubers into it, but it shows a lack of ignorance. It shows lack of education. I was misdiagnosed and wrongly treated for bipolar as a teen. And it made me so much worse. Yeah, misdiagnosing, especially serious mental health, can have some very real life terrible repercussions. Um, mismedicating can come with that, which can seriously exacerbate other mental health issues if you're given the wrong medication. Um, I mean, it can be life threatening at times. That's how serious it can be. I have a feeling I'm going to lose myself in the chat again here soon. Yeah, Jen says Kim Kardashian doesn't look like Kim Kardashian. She's photoshopped all time. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of celebrities who are constantly photo touched or uh, photoshopped. Even our beauty gurus and beauty influencers constantly are using Photoshop. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but it puts an unrealistic stereotype on, on everybody as a society, men included.
Absolutely, Rebel Girl. I agree with that statement 100%. You feel sad for women constantly photoshopping their pictures. It's, yeah, I mean, it can be. And that's what leads to like eating disorders. Um, I've seen a lot of Sloan and I know Creep Show Art. And I think a couple of other creators have recently talked about um, checking, like body checking, image checking. Like that, that that's an issue that's going on. You don't want to be a young woman in the age of social media. Yeah, I couldn't imagine going through like the TikTok phase right now that these teenagers are in. I couldn't imagine going through that. Hey, Emily, I hope your little guy got put to bed well. Hey, Melody, glad you made it. Marion. Whoa, it is early where you're at, three o'clock in the morning. Thanks for stopping in. I hope you go back to bed. Uh, you're lucky in Australia. Your health system is great and available to everybody. Uh, I feel for anyone who can't get the help they need. Yeah, it. that's something that I think everybody in the United States feels like we need a good revamp of our health system. It's just... It's just crap. You're, oh man, I knew that was gonna happen. Sorry guys, I'm trying to find my spot. I knew it was gonna jump because I was, I knew you guys had still been chatting but it acted like I was down at the bottom. Your insurance is horrible. You can't afford mental health treatment right now, but in the state, New Jersey says I make too much money for state help. Um, call 211 because even though you don't qualify for state help, there's still probably local resources, and this goes to anybody in the U.S. Uh, even if you don't qualify for state resources, there are still resources in your area especially if you're in a bigger city where they will, there's places that offer um, sliding scales. So your treatment will fluctuate based off of your pay. There's also low income or um, more cost efficient ways to get the help that you need. Oops. Yeah, it definitely depends on where you live for services. About schizophrenia, a good friend who fosters children had kiddos that were taken from mom and dad who had schizophrenia didn't have any rights outside of visitation due to his diagnosis. Well, that's a fault of the state, in my opinion. Um, if, it, if he solely only had visitation due to his schizophrenia, unless they could prove that he was dangerous to his children or neglectful to his children because of his diagnosis, like if he wasn't seeking treatment or it wasn't uh, contained, to a degree to where he could be a parent, then I don't think that that's necessarily appropriate in my opinion.
Hey, Kiki. I'm feeling a little bit better, Melody. I'm still not the best, though. Oh, no. Okay. Hey, GGB. Yeah, be careful with that medication. I'm sure you're if you're prescribed it, you probably were given this fuel. So I'm not going to give it to you. But just be very careful. It's a super potent and dangerous drug. Yeah, if your therapist makes you feel bad, get out, you know, from experience. Yeah, there is always somebody, a therapist who may work for one person isn't going to work for another. And that's fine. There are so many sites where you can get reviews on professionals. Yeah, there is. Find the doctor you click with. Absolutely. Your oldest. I'm sorry to hear that, Kiki. Yeah, it is surprising to go to, I see this kind of popping up for like specialty therapy. And it is harder to, if you're trying to get into a specialized therapy, it is going to be harder. There is typically going to be a wait list. I would advise you to go to somebody who's not specialized, like for grief therapy, I would just make sure you're talking to some kind of therapist to make sure that you're able to talk out your emotions with a professional until that wait list becomes available. The same thing with trauma, uh, especially with trauma, like you want to be sure you're able to, in a safe and healthy way, disclose what you're struggling with or your experience until that's available and you're not so far on the wait list. Absolutely, Nikki, make sure you're just always trying to be an advocate for yourself. That's some of the best advice you anybody could give is just self love and self advocacy. Not always are professionals going to advocate for you. They may not be able to they may maybe don't know how. There's a multitude of reasons. A lot of them are just full of excuses. The best bet is to always put yourself first, especially when it comes to any kind of mental health or serious issue. Yeah, social media has been more of uh, an effect on people than I think the larger society is willing to address. Um, it made it it's caused a lot of people to have more like be more self conscious and have, in my opinion, maybe struggle with things they wouldn't have. I'm not going to say it's all social media's fault, but I think like as social media has become this norm and 
we continue to put these people on pedestals and push them into uh, fame and things like that, it can leave everybody else kind of in the dust and feeling less than at times. And I'm sorry to hear that's something you have to um, deal with, Mama. Yeah, this year we have seen a telemedicine boom and um, a lot of advertising. I, I don't necessarily think that the advertising is a bad thing because it's maybe getting to people that wouldn't think otherwise too. I know I've heard some people say that it has actually helped them feel more confident because they didn't want to go to a therapist in person. So having the ability to do it via webcam or phone call has given them some kind of confidence in, um, in talking to somebody and divulging information to them. So I, I can appreciate it from that standpoint. I just my only worry is exactly that some are scams or that people aren't fully vetted or credentialed to be providing services that they are advertising. Oh man, I just totally lost my spot. I don't know where I was, guys, so I'm just going to have to pick up <laughs> where um, where I'm at. Thank you, Kiki. I appreciate that. And Jersey. I'm going to try and catch up with, uh, I think I've caught up with the chat. I'm only going to stay on a few more minutes. Yeah, I understand that. I I'm happy you are in recovery from your ED. And it, it can. I mean, there's serious repercussions to... Um, a lot of the different forms of ED. And um, I mean, you, you're dealing with that currently. I'm sorry, that's something that you have to continue to maintain. If you're missing therapy groups and stuff like that, I'm sure there are alumni groups or um, recovery type groups for your specific ED, if that's what you're interested in, I'm sure you can find that. Life coaches crossing the line into therapy. Yeah, I mean, that happens at times. I think some life coaches, because they, it depends on where you're at, to be honest, if you can be a life coach without having any certification. But if you're talking to somebody who's just good at talking to people and doesn't have any kind of educational experience that I don't think they realize that they're crossing the line into therapy. I think that's kind of the issue with life coaches. I would just advise if you are talking to a life coach to make sure they have some kind of uh, credentials or if your state requires certification, 
then make sure that they have that. I know in the state I'm currently in, you don't have to be certified. You don't have to have any kind of certificate to be a life coach. I thought about it there for a little bit. Um, but it is true. Oftentimes, if they don't know the difference between assisting people with bettering their lives, they often end up falling into a realm of therapy. And if they aren't educated in any kind of way around any serious issue which can come up in life coaching, then it does run a very icy thin line. Of course, Blue, I'm glad you were here. And Spirit Soul, I'm glad you guys were here. Hey, Claire, I appreciate everybody who's been here and everybody who's been vulnerable and willing to discuss some of their struggles and how you have coped through those. I only hope that these can help people, whether in replay or currently watching or currently listening, that it can help them in any struggles that they are facing or just ultimately reduce the stigma of what, what some of this stuff is really like. I'm glad you guys are appreciative of these conversations. I am probably going to um, put up a poll, maybe just on my um, community page, but if not, I might do it on my Twitter too, if I can remember about what days of the week would be more beneficial for these open discussions. I still want to do it weekly. It seems that Wednesday nights are becoming overloaded with other creators going live. And I don't ever want to put people in the position where they have to choose who they need to be present for. I never mind if you guys don't want to be here if something more exciting is happening. So I want to get some input from you guys as far as what day of the week you guys would like these, um, these kind of open discussions and on Monday and depending on whatever day ends up being the target, I will probably put the voting poll two days before just to give people enough time to see the poll and to provide their input if they have any we had a couple of suggestions on the last poll which i will probably include in a at least one maybe two of those suggestions in next week's poll if you ever have any and you don't want to post it on there feel free to dm them to me i will include them in the poll selection as you guys can tell i'm starting to not feel very well it's why i can't think straight. Um, with that being said, I know there's been a lot of stuff going on online. <laughs> you say Thursday, I'll put it up. It'll be a weekday. Um, weekends, I, I don't want to include weekends. I like to do those days for just random live streaming for like get ready with me or just chit chatty ones where we can talk about the drama of YouTube, which I know there's been a lot going on. I'm trying to catch up on it. Um, I do have a reaction video coming soon. I just have to edit it. And there's a lot of footage that I filmed before I got on here. So you will see this look um, in the next couple of days in a video. So with all of that being said, I really do appreciate you guys. I hope you guys understand that. I hope if anybody needs any assistance, you feel comfortable to dial star 211 if you're in the U.S. If you're not in the U.S., I can assist you in Googling. That's really all I can do to find uh, resources for you if you're not in the area or in the country. If you are here in the U.S. and you don't know how to operate 211 or it doesn't help you, feel free to let me know if you're comfortable with telling me your somewhat surrounding areas. I can try my best to find some resources for you to assist you in whatever it is you need. Um, with that being said, just be sure you keep in mind, I'm human, I have a job, I'm sick currently. So if I don't respond right away, 
I'm not trying to ignore you. It may take me a day or two. So with all of that being said, for the last time, I am going to go for the day. Um, I may go live tomorrow. We'll see how I'm feeling. But I hope you all are having a good day, evening or night, wherever you are. I will see you next time. Bye, guys.